kurandursun.com Dinlerden özgürlüğün sesi Çeviren ve alt yazılandıran Milo Manara um, This section Richard Dawkins will be talking about Harun Yahya's um, I can't read Atlas of Creation With, Without much ado we'll go straight to Richard Dawkins Thank you very much. I'm truly delighted to be here and I want to salute uh, those uh, ex-Muslims who are prepared to stand up and say that that's what they are and may you be the nucleus of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions more uh, who do the same thing. I am a great admirer of Al Jazeera's English language service and I was therefore very shocked when I saw a couple of days ago the, the um, Arabic version of Al Jazeera with subtitles in which they um, interviewed this man, Harun Yahya, um, whose real name is Adnan Oktar. He's an extremely naive creationist. And in exactly the opposite spirit to Al Jazeera's English language service, the Arabic language service, swallowed it hook, line and sinker. And I got the impression that we are divided, that there's a... That in, that I, I would have got the impression from this Al Jazeera broadcast that the whole of the Islamic world is completely and utterly taken in by the uh, naive pseudoscience which is creationism. Adnan Oktar, alias Harun Yahya, uh, stands for that. He's also a, a very unpleasant man. Um, nobody could say that he doesn't have balls. And he, he shows this in, in various ways. When, when my book, The God Delusion, first came out, he succeeded temporarily in getting the publisher and translator arrested for blasphemy. Uh, in the last few weeks, he has succeeded in persuading a Turkish court to ban my website, richarddawkins.net. Uh, and he's said to have sued me for 8,000 Turkish lira, that's 3,300 British pounds. Um, his lawyers have listed phrases and sentences that I wrote on my website, which they claim assault his personal rights. Um, weirdly, I learned about this suit, this lawsuit, all secondhand from newspapers. I've received not the slightest communication from his lawyers, from him, or from any Turkish court, uh, but I'm advised by uh, friends in Turkey that I ought to be hiring a lawyer in spite of the fact that nobody's even approached me with this with this suit. That seems to be the way they do it. Um, anyway, the first thing we did when we heard about this was to get uh, my entire article, the one that offended him, translated into Turkish and uh, we put it up on the website because needless to say the attempt to ban it in Turkey is pretty futile. It's very hard to ban a website and there are large areas of Turkey where it can be seen, and it's now been picked up by other Turkish websites. Uh, for example, this one, that's again an, a, another Turkish translation of the article which has offended uh, Harun Yahya. He is widely known for writing a large number of books, uh, most notably Atlas of Creation, which has been distributed free to enormous numbers of science teachers uh, around the world. And when I say free, the, the sheer scale of that operation is mind-boggling. This book is a, a large format book. It's uh, got 764 pages. Every one of those pages is high gloss paper with gorgeously reproduced photographs of animals on every page. I took the book yesterday around to uh, Oxford University Press and I had three people there uh, try to cost out what it would cost to produce this book. And they thought that the, that the, uh, the, the cost of producing um, these, uh, something, did somebody say 10,000 copies to, to, to me today being distributed free, that would be about uh, half a million pounds. 
So um, this is a free gift from somebody. Where the money comes from, nobody seems to know. Um, I'll come to that in a moment. To give you an idea of the size of the book, the dog is intended to give scale. Um, I would like to think it also gives offence. As for where the money comes from, I think it would make a nice assignment for an investigative journalist to try to work that out. Does it come from Adnan Oktar himself? Well, he's certainly not a poor man, as you saw from that James Bond villain picture that I had up at, at first. Um, and just recently, uh, he has, this is, a, this is from The Independent, um, he has offered a prize to anybody who can produce an intermediate fossil, an evolutionary intermediate fossil. The size of the prize is 10 trillion Turkish lira, which is equivalent to 4.4 trillion British pounds. <laughs> that is 36 times <laughs> the gross national product of Turkey. It's more than the gross national product of Germany, France, Britain, Italy and China combined. 13 times the wealth of Bill Gates. So perhaps we should all put in for it, but I'm going to tell you at the end that his idea of what would constitute an intermediate fossil is a fairly odd one. Uh, now, on to the book. On to the book itself. Um, unlike most Christian fundamentalists who think the world was created in six days, 6,000 years ago, Adnan Oktar is an old earth creationist. He understands what fossils are and he agrees that they're old. His one point, which is bludgeoned home on every single page of this enormous book, is that ancient animals haven't changed. So that's his strategy, quite different from the Christian fundamentalists. His strategy is on every page he has a fossil and then next door to it he has a modern animal and he says, look, they're exactly the same as each other. I'm going to show you a few examples to show the depth of his zoological erudition. Uh, the, the first one on the left is a crinoid. A crinoid is a so-called sea lily. It's a member of the phylum Echinodermata. Uh, it is a relative of a sea urchin. It's a kind of sea urchin on a stalk. That's a fossil. On the right is what he says is exactly the same. What that is, is a sabellid worm. It's, a, it's an annelid worm. It's related to earthworms. It's nothing whatever to do with echinoderms. Um, just to give you an idea of that, that's a very, very crude uh, taxonomy of the animal kingdom according to uh, modern zoology. You see that the animal kingdom is divided up into two main branches. On the left, we have the so-called protostomes. This is all based on embryological criteria. On the right, we have the deuterostomes, and this is a major, major division of the animal kingdom. These are two sub-kingdoms. An animal in the protostomes and an animal in the deuterostomes could not be more different from each other while still remaining members of the animal kingdom. And uh, the sabellid worm, you see up at the top left, is an annelid, it's a protostome, and the crinoid uh, is an echinoderm, it's a deuterostome. These things could not be more different if they tried, unless they became a plant or something. Here's another example. Uh, the fossil there is an eel, uh, and he says it's 95 million years old, I have no reason to doubt that. Um, the modern animal, which hasn't changed at all since the fossil eel, that's not an eel at all, it's a snake! It's a sea snake, a poisonous sea snake. You've probably seen them if you've dived in tropical waters. Um, it's a poisonous uh, sea snake belonging to the genus Laticorda. Once again, you couldn't be more different if you, if you tried, so long as you stay a vertebrate. This is the champion one of all. Um, there's a caddis fly in amber, which is 25 million years old. And look, it hasn't changed.